Welcome to LOM, the best mobile mechanic show this side of the pond. The only car fixing show that teaches you how to count. One, two, three, four, five. Crack open a cold one and gather around a misfire. Because today we're serving up boot spaces getting soaked, premium parts, diagnostics, and the van pulls a sickie. Look at it. If you like botch jobs, well, you're in the right place because this is Life of a Mobile Mechanic. No staring at. And good morning, everyone. Okay. First thing, we have got a BMW 320i with a six cylinder in it. You don't see that often. So customer states that he's replaced the spark plugs and he's also replaced CCV and stuff like that. And he's still getting a random cylinder misfire. So now we're gonna go and take a look on what's going on with this engine. He's replaced the spark plugs. So we will see if that's got something to do with this misfire but the thing is he hasn't changed his coils but first thing we're going to check what's common on this which is the metallic converter cracking so how do you feel about this mate what is this <laughs> anyway let's get to it right jumping into the what's it called the diagnostic you can see cylinder one two and three misfire and that's very odd if I'm being honest with you, because that is on the same controller or on, they share the same ground for the coal pack anyway, which is the one, two, and three. Four, five, and six shares a different ground as well. So we're gonna have a look whilst my brother is checking the cat. We're gonna see if the ground on cylinder one, two, and three is okay. As you can see, the ground wire looks healthy. Oh, hold on. Ground wire looks healthy. There's no corrosion or anything like that. Um, and look, the coal pack is, they're all new, all three of them, except for those. Uh, so this is four, five, and six. Now, looking at the spark plugs, it's all the same. It's new, like what the customer said. So now what my brother is doing underneath there is he's just checking the catalytic converter to see if it's cracked because it's very odd to see one, two, and three to be misfiring together. Let's get checking. Right, so we haven't found anything on the cat. So now we're gonna try and see if we can activate the DSA or not because, oh. It's a long story, but it's another controller for the air system pretty much. So we're gonna see, whilst my brother is there, see if it works or not. We're gonna activate it. Ready, bro? Anything? Yes. Did it move? No. No? no? Yeah, okay, so let's have a look and see what's with that. Did it did the valve move at all? No. No. That's mad. No, it's single mirror. <laughs> yeah, so basically it's like a swell flap on a diesel, but it's on a petrol. Yeah, it controls the flow of the air if it's uh, where it's going, so the more you rev it, the more it opens up to let more, more air in, basically. And if, if it's not getting enough air, it could cause you misfire, lumpy idle, and etc. etc. Long things. Yeah, let's let's find out. All right, moving on to this next one. Um, with that BMW, he needs to get his swell. <laughs> he needs to get his swell flap. What's it called again? Uh, his uh, his diesel fix first before we can fully really diagnose the issue. And as you know, with those things, when the diesel is not working properly, the right air fuel ratio is not correct so anyway moving on to this next one which is a mercedes c-class uh, in for a full service abs diagnostic and also other things that we need to fit such as the third light for the rear so yeah we'll start off by diagnosing it and you can see it here it comes with a lot of faults look you can see it there so we're gonna have a look and let you guys know what we're dealing with. The steering angle sensor is working because it's actually reading the steering center off, for goodness sake, the steering angle. So as you can see, I've just pressed reset. So now it's at zero. And obviously you have to put this as straight as you can. And now it's just telling us to follow all of these steps. And then uh, that's pretty much it for his steering angle sensor. So we'll get back to you in a second. It's at minus 1.5 and if I was to you can see it there rotating 
so there is actually no problem on his steering angle sensor everything is good with the steering angle so as you can see it's changing value as I rotate the steering wheel and that should be at dead zero there you go yeah so that is one step done okay as you can see right there everything that was current earlier is not there anymore everything is stored 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 there's nothing else so now we're going to be deleting the codes yes there you go trouble codes not detected we're all done here after just a basic adaptation of the steering angle sensor you can see it there that is screaming for help so let's get it done look at this you ready for this look at that front left marker side lamp front right marker side lamp and then you will also get i want to turn the headlight on and press on the brakes tail lamp left third brake lamp tail lamp backup bulb on yeah everything is just like shining basically on your face so let's uh get it checked because um we've actually gone around the car already and we've seen that all of them are either flickering or just not shining enough so exactly that they need replacing so let's get to it and as you can see right there that is why that's getting triggered now we're going to be replacing it with a brand new 501 are you right there mate you struggling there you struggling mechanic are you struggling so tiny. <laughs> and i've taken over because he was struggling but you can see right there this one is absolutely blown as well so let's get that replaced that is a lot of water there mate look it's all down there look at it brand new from mercedes mate bling bling and we've also cleaned this piece obviously so that the gasket on that can sit correctly isn't it bro isn't it yeah mate Right, so this one was saying tail lamp left. That's the area that we're getting in the dash. And uh, I can't find a connector. There's no connector for it. Weird. A bit weird. Okay, never mind me for whatever reason. This light here is Bluetooth. And uh, <laughs> this light here, uh, we found the bulb that is actually broken, which is that one there. Look, you can see it. Mm -hmm. Same with that one as well. Uh oh, yeah, that is that so broke, bro. That's finished. Right, cool. Let's Two. replace those. I don't know how many bulbs that took, but all is good now. No more bulb action going. So, we've replaced that. We've replaced that. And we've also replaced the one at the top. We've replaced that one as well. Well, two of the bulbs there anyway. And everything else seems to be working perfect. So now it's time for the service. And whilst we are waiting for the oil down there, to drain uh, we're going to be replacing obviously that filter that's your fuel filter and that filter so that's your oil filter and the cabin filter and the air filter let's get started oh no oh no knee oh no that has got to be the dirtiest filter i've seen it's probably run over i don't know a bird or something before but that is not clean that's probably not been changed for a very long time so let's help him out Oh. Third draw on the right. And of course, it's man filter. As you know, I like that. Hopefully, it'll be spotted. That'll be nice. I'm always showing their products. Come on, surely. Surely. Whoa, whoa, whoa. There's an orientation for this. Just like the rest of the world now. There's an orientation. The right orientation. Oh, look, that's the wrong orientation. <laughs> orientation. <laughs> All clips back on. One, two, three. 
two, four, five. Six. Cool. If you guys are saying that I'm lying, all clips are back on. Look, even the ones at the back. Yeah. And there, uh, I am not lying. Now, time to replace the fuel filter and the oil filter. Now, now, I haven't put the filter in yet. It's time to replace this oil filter element. Just make sure that it's all tucked under there, under the housing, because we don't want that clipping later. Need to advise him with his belt as well. Look at that. That is uh, perished. <laughs> oh, I love that word, perished. Don't know why. There you go. Much, much perished. Uh -huh. Brand new. And that's also brand new, all the gaskets. You can brand see it right there, all brand new. As you can see, none of the parts that I used are crap. So Bosch, Marle, Mal, whatever, man filter. And as you can see here, this is his cabin filter, which is not bad, to be honest. Uh, 08, 11, 19, but Christ, that's what, five years ago? Oh my god, I can't believe I'm saying that. 2019 was five years ago. And obviously we have Shell Oil, which is the 530C3, which is the spec for this car here. So let's put that golden stuff right in there. Now that we're all done here, we now have to do a service reset on the vehicle. And as part of our service as well, I just want to let you know this, is to check the batteries inside the TPMS sensor. And we're gonna be doing that with this X tool right here. That is us all done now. So no more error message running through there. So we've done a service reset and all of that stuff. You can see no more warning light, not even the ESP light, no bulbs, and etc. 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 So that is us. Are oh, you trying to break his car, bro? <laughs> anyway, that is us done. So let's move on to the next job. Let's go. Okay, now onto this next job. So we have got a VW Passat, I think, Golf, the long one, the wagon. We have got a misfire, well, multiple misfire code on this vehicle. So let's have a look and see what we can find. Um, it's showing cylinder four and two. Yeah, oh, it was four and one at the time. So what I'm gonna do is move cylinder one into cylinder two, cylinder three into cylinder four. That's what I'm going to do. Because look at this, it's quite tedious and he was on the roadside, which is I totally understand. So we're gonna do that and see if the misfire moves. Let's get to it. Oh, and before we do that, I just uh, wanna let everyone know that the spark plugs was only replaced last year by VW because this car's got uh, full VW history. So yeah, like what I said, cylinder three into cylinder four, cylinder one into cylinder two. So put it back yeah, my we're gonna again, do. Huh? Put it back my yeah, you're gonna go on, go on. I can't. Go on. Pull, 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 pull. Why is it stiff in us, bro? Don't, don't poop yourself. Go on, pull, pull. <laughs> yeah, as you Ready? can, you can tell my voice is. Yeah. I'm ill, man. Oh, oh my god. god. Why is it stiff? Pull, 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 pull. <coughs> straight up, straight up. Just that straight. Is straight. <laughs> Go on, I managed to remove two. Come on. Managed to remove at least one. I'm under it now. Oh, there you go. See? Go on. Yeah, there's no grip on that, mate. No grip. Are you making excuses? Go on, pull, 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 pull. Oh, I'm going through it. <laughs> pull, 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 pull. Man, there's no grip on the game, mate. Have I got it? I don't know, mate. Because <laughs> I will bang my hand for sure. Where? Like, on this thing. There's a space. On this. Oh, what? I'm, I'm, I'm scared. <laughs> Alright. Go on. Ah. Ah. Got to warm the hands up. Warm up, warm up. up. <laughs> this car is not going to. Uh, I'm getting cramps. Oh, God. Uh. 
Go on. That's it. Nice. It's so much vacuum. So you guys are probably thinking you can see cylinder one and four there. Yes, that's correct. As you can see in here, the vehicle is unfortunately still misfiring on cylinder one. Even after replacing the core pack and switching spark plugs over, upon close inspection of cylinder one bore, you can clearly see that there is a massive difference in gap between the piston walls. And looking at this picture, you can see that the cylinder wall is scratched along with a lot of metallic shaving that you can see here, here, here and everywhere pretty much. Unfortunately for the customer, it's going to need to be reconditioned. Anyway, let's move on to the next job. Going on? <laughs> so, the auxiliary belt of the van went. I don't know if it's the auxiliary belt or the tensioner. I know that the tensioner was making noise this morning. Have a look, see? So, Have a look, see? You can, you can see it there, look. Uh, the battery light. And I've got no steering light. No steering light. Are oh, they coming for you? And now I'm oh, wait, so we've it? been driving. For 10 minutes now, the nearest Euro car park is literally just down the road. We're gonna we've been, die. We've been driving for 10 minutes now. So I'm just hoping as I turn into this traffic light, I hope that it doesn't break down. I don't mind it breaking down just over there, but if it breaks down in the road, I am in massive trouble because there's only two of us and I'm really scared. This is gonna die soon, I know it is. Anyway, catch you guys. I'm sorry for the next person, I might not be able to come to you. Hey, so this is under my van now. <laughs> you can see there, what's that? Oh my god. What's happened to the AC compressor? What the? Look at it. Oh man, okay. This is the smaller issue of the lot, to be honest. This is the issue. Why is it wobbling like that? Look. Goodness me. So I think that top bolt came undone, that's why it's wobbling. Either undone or it snapped. I'm not sure. Yeah, so bad news. Bad news, boys and girls. Snapped, snapped. Oh my god. What do I do with this van man? Oh my lord. Not even just that look. That shade off as well. From that. <laughs> so I need this whole new mount Bro Bro Alright, I'm gonna buy the one with the AC belt I'm just gonna let this hang What a joy Yeah Be a mobile mechanic Get a sister in van Yeah <laughs> Oh my god This is the bunch job of the year Look at that It fits a 1390 Oh Oh, we forgot one. <laughs> oh my days, I can't believe it. Oh God. <laughs> For <the> three hours. <laughs> 24 hours later. Uh, as you can see right there, that sheared off and I was missing that piece. And you can see the bolt is in there as well. And same, well, I say same, the bracket is still in the aircon you can see that piece what's a piece from here so i guess it's now time to put the brand new second hand part in and also what's annoying about this is that they have all different size bolts so for the brackets it's all the 13 volts and then you have 10 mils up here and then you have 12 mil or 11 mil or something weird then you have 2 h5 yeah it's not fun <laughs> All that's left for me to do is to find a bolt this long with the same thread pretty much so that I can secure it there and there. I have to put the alternator on as well but this is the important bit. Now that the van is fixed we can finally go back to work so let's go and help people out let's get to it. Okay back on this 118i I don't know if you guys can remember but if you check this link here you know that you guys have said to me before when I replaced the ABS sensor that it was shaving and stuff like that. Well, 
you're wrong. The reason why I'm here today though, is because his brake pads are done. And it was grinding at first, he said, and then it started knocking. So it's likely the pad was moving around and stuff and all the debris is probably inside, but it's all fine now. I just had to find out what's going on with it and stuff, but all is good with that. We're gonna be replacing it. So I'm gonna take it off and then I'm gonna go to go and get Paget pretty much. So watch me, watch me. Ooh. you see that? It's just falling in pieces, look. Crazy. All right, before we remove this disc, we obviously have to adjust it just so that we don't struggle taking it out. You have to back it off the, what's it called? The brake shoes. So we don't struggle taking it out. Easy. No scratch on the shoes. Because we did it right. Boom, just like that, we are done on this side now. Perfect, on to the next. Okay, and so that is us done with this BMW now. Yeah, it was amazing how it was uh, more like a vibration more than a uh, grinding noise with the pads and the disc. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what's happened there, but it was falling into bits. So I'm assuming that the pad material was just moving up and down and that's what's causing the noise that it was making but anyway we are all done now so we're gonna go and move on to the next job which is another bmw so let's go 20 minutes later another day in paradise that's new right so i managed to crawl my van about 40 miles and I got a new intercooler. Look, 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 look. The van still doesn't have an intercooler. I'm gonna do it here in situ because this is just next level annoying. And uh, as you can see there, yes, this van was naturally aspirated. It was, and it actually ran very quietly, but obviously it was struggling to go uphill and stuff like that. Now, anyway, let's get on with the day. Let's, uh, let's sort this out. <laughs> Ten seconds later. And there you have it, everyone. <laughs> that I've just fitted uh, into cooler. So, in one video, this van broke down twice. Could you believe it? <laughs> I, I can't. I can't fathom. But, oh, no. I'm going to have to replace this soon anyway. Um, it's just annoying that obviously we had to cancel beforehand on a customer, on a diag... No, no. We were supposed to do a cam belt. I had to cancel. We were supposed to do diagnostic. We cancelled again because this broke down. So, yeah, apologies. I know it's my subscribers that is actually booked in for those jobs because of this van. I had to cancel on them, but we're going to go there anyway. They're scheduled again for Friday and Thursday. So I think this is the perfect time to end the video. So uh, thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the content. Um, if you would like to see more, not of my van breaking down, but content like this, please like, share, comment, subscribe, and we will see you on the next one. Peace.